from West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Before all the interstates were built, old time music and fiddling was really community based. You would go and play with your friends on the weekends and trade tunes. It's not just sound entering your ears and being processed by your brain. There's a deep emotional connection and investment that goes into participating in old time music. It's something that means a lot to people. It means a lot to pass it on to other people so that it keeps going and more people play it. And it's not something that just fizzles out. What exactly is old time music? And how does it relate to the hills and valleys of Appalachia? Where are its roots? What stories does it bring? And who treasures it enough to keep old time music alive? The answers are found in such places as Clay County, West Virginia, a rugged land rich in natural resources and old time traditions. Its first non-native residents settled here early in the 19th century. By 1839, hillside farms dotted the land as 28 families labored to make a life for themselves. Musician and retired coal truck driver John Morris grew up on a farm in Clay County. It was basically a ginseng moonshine economy. They traded in stores and they took a lot of furs and they floated logs to Charleston and sold them. Basically, the best way to get out of here was in a boat or walk. There was really no roads. By 1890, Clay County was home to nearly 4,700 people, mostly due to the influx of industry. As newly laid railroads carried coal and timber to distant markets, longtime residents welcomed new arrivals and forged lasting friendships, swapping family recipes, old time tunes, and related stories. Storyteller and musician Adam Booth is an adjunct instructor of Appalachian Studies at Shepherd University when you look at different parts of West Virginia and see who came to the different parts. Immigrants often came to work in the mines or to cut stones or to work on rail or in timber. They came from different parts of the world to do that and they brought with them different traditions and some of the easiest things to bring was music because it's often lightweight. native of neighboring Roan County, Bobby Taylor is a fourth generation fiddler. Part of the charm of Clay County and why a lot of people are drawn to Clay County and places like Clay County is the isolation and what gems that they have. People are still playing old time music. It survives. For banjo player Kim Johnson of neighboring Kanawha County, there's something to be said for playing old time tunes with friends. In old time, everybody plays all at the same time. You may not be feeling the greatest when so you can go to a folk festival and you go meet people and all of a sudden you have a tune or two and, and you visit and all of a sudden you have a tune or two more and all of a sudden you've been there four or five hours. It's energizing and uplifting all at the same time. Guitarist Travis Steimling is an associate professor of musicology and director of bluegrass and old time bands at West Virginia University. He's also a scholar of commercial country and traditional Appalachian music. Part of the joy that comes out of making this music is that it is pleasurable, it is rhythmic, it is engaging. There's something simpler, it seems, for people to get together and play banjos and fiddles and guitars in community, often without amplifiers and things like that. It feels more unmediated to people. It feels as though it's something that's just natural.
very broadly, it's a way that connects us to our past, to our heritage. Because story and music are so closely tied to the land and the people who live and the way that they live in these areas, when the land starts to be destroyed, this is something we can take with us if we can't continue to live there.